All right, guys, let's talk about the Vancouver Canucks um, and their upcoming 2024-25 season. Uh, obviously knocked out in the second round last season by the Edmonton Oilers. Not a bad feat and a great bounce back season from the 2022-23 season. Uh, so hopefully they can uh, continue to build on that form. Uh, but I'll hand you over to Jaden and he can take you through the projected lineup. Yeah, we'll see if they can uh, do what they did last year in regards to um, playoffs. But uh, starting up at the top, uh, new face, Heinen. Then back to the old old guard, uh, you got Patterson, Beza, Joshua, Miller, Garland, Hoglander, Bluger, DeBrusque, Sherwood, Suda, Sprong. On the defense, you are obviously your captain, Hughes, Heronik, uh, Susie, Myers, Forbort, and Dehane. And then in the goalie section, um, I'll just zoom in so you can see a little bit better. But uh, you got Demko and Silobs there as your duo continuing. And just in regards to the press box, I'll just move my camera. It's just two little mentions is uh, Aman and uh, Jilson. So possibly taking over four ball, you know, whoever performs basically. But that's your projected lineup at the moment as per... Um, cap wages it's not what we obviously would say might might have happened or these lines will be the set lines but this is just a overview of what the team is um i'll maybe let you go through just of some note where the uh misses from last season uh, either through free agency or trades yeah i mean it's going to be interesting uh, a couple of uh shake-ups they obviously lose um elias lindholm which I, I don't really know if they were ever going to be a major player on him. I wasn't overly impressed with um, his performance when they brought him on. He obviously started with a bang, but um, sort of fizzled out a little bit. So I'm not surprised they didn't re-sign him. Um, they lose Ian Cole as that third pair defenseman. Um, he, he was pretty steady um, and not, not a bad third pair defenseman, um, I must say. Uh, He's not someone to do anything special. He can obviously jump into that second line um, as well. But yet they obviously lost um, Gazeffi, D. Gazeffi, uh Sam Lafferty, a couple of lower um, bottom six forwards, uh, and Mikhaev, uh as well, who was a little bit disappointing, I think. Um, so I'm not sure if it's a massive loss. I feel like he, you know, he, he could have been a lot. Um, but at the same time, he never really developed into what everyone thought he would. So it might not be as big of a loss as what it looks like. Um, and then Casey DeSmith on the goaltending front. But, you know, Silovs um, has been performing quite well uh, when he's been in, in the lineup and for a few of those games in the playoffs as well that he did show up for. So I think they've got a pretty good pairing there. So I don't think Casey DeSmith is going to be a big loss. Um, but look, I... I think the players that they've brought in probably outweigh the players that they've lost, in honesty. Um, Jake DeBrusque is a is a big big get, and 5.5 um, isn't a massive uh, paycheck for, for a guy who only scored 20 goals last year, but we, we know he can he can score a lot more than that. And, you know, he could probably he could probably score 30 goals, especially on a on a higher powered Vancouver line. We know Boston tend to play a bit more defensive. Um, so now that he is on more of a high powered team, he might be able to hit, you know, 30, 30 plus goals this season. Um, the inclusion of Heinen as well is, is, is a good get and a good pickup, especially at a cheap contract. I don't know that he'll play on that first line as they've got projected. Um, but you never know, you know, he put up 17 goals last season with Boston. Um, but yeah, and, and obviously Sprong and Sherwood uh, to sort of shore up those that, that bottom six as well is quite good acquisitions. As for their defence, nothing really changes except for that bottom six pairing, uh, uh, defence pairing. Um, Dehane, I, I'm not a huge fan of him um, other than the fact that he throws his weight around. Uh, but again, it's not a huge... It's not an upgrade. It's not a downgrade from what they had last season, and their their top four is basic is exactly the same as what it was last season. So overall, um, I kind of feel like these guys have got better, but 
question is going to be, can they live up to what they did last season? Yeah, yeah, that's I guess that's the big one. Like, uh, you look at it, they've lost a lot of like depth pieces and middle of the pack pieces. Um, hmm. You know, the Smith one, you know, depth goalie. You've got uh, Cole, the you know, your depth D, and then a few um, other second, third liners, or even lower uh, forwards. So nothing that's not you know replaceable by any means. Mm-hmm. And Look, they've got um, they brought in some some few people here, and a lot of them, you know, they're two two years, one year contracts. So there's nothing really besides DeBrusks, obviously there with uh, seven years. Um, there's no real big term in regards to that, so no big risks taken. So a lot of cap management uh, can happen here. Obviously, you got Pedersen's contract uh, kicks in, eleven point six mil. Uh, so that eats up a bit. Um, I guess my question. Can Demko do what he did again? He's um, kind of hitting prime years now, you would probably say, like 28 plus for a goalie. You're starting to hit uh, your, your prime years, you're starting to perform uh, consistently. So I'm interested to see if he can keep that up. And then uh, you obviously got your, your young one in um, age 23 in Silovs. So let's see if he can actually perform um, consistently throughout the year or if they're going to have to go for um, another goaltender to fill that second role. I I don't know. It's, it's not much different from last year, like the lineup in, in my head, looking at the lineups, yeah. it, it all feels the same. So it really comes down to, can the coaching do it again? Can the system perform the way it did last year? And I feel like that's what yeah. it comes down to is the system. Yeah, I, I, I feel like this team has the ability to do what they did last season and if not go further, but it could also go south very quickly as well yeah. if um if they don't get some performances that they got last season. Obviously, JT Miller, you know, 103 points last year was massive. Um, Brock Besser, uh, 40 goals on the season. Elias Pedersen was a little bit down, um, although his his overall play was still was still quite good. It's funny to say down um, for an 89 though. point player, but yeah, 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 it's crazy, yeah. I, isn't I know, it? I know, right? <laughs> I know, right? It's like um. You know, he scored 89, he's over a point per game, but with that $11.6 million contract, um, they're going to be looking for more from him. Um, you know, especially with all the criticism JT Miller got uh, for an $8 million contract and he's putting up 103 points. Yeah. Um, I guess the comparison I would Pedersen. say, though, is uh, Pedersen has a really good um, two-way game. Two-way uh, game, yeah, he it, it, it does. Reminds me he, of like he a Heeshear in a sense, um, which was in the same draft class, so... Yeah, well, exactly, and you know, there's a reason why Pedersen um, and and he should have been talked about as those players to sort of potentially take over from Bergeron. Um, mm. uh, they, they they are the top two when you aspect. think about that uh, Bergeron replacement, though. Yeah, exactly, um, and yeah, so obviously he does have that two way game, but they they'll still be expecting that probably hundred point plus, especially for that um, that sort of money. Um, but yeah, at the end of the day, it really does come down to can these guys go again? Um, and I really, I think they can. You know, I think Quinn Hughes is, you know, he's 24. He's just hitting his straps. Um, his first season as captain as well was absolutely phenomenal. Um, Heronik was was quite solid and um, they worked really, really well together. Um, if, if Silovs can be that good backup that Demko needs and Demko can stay fit and healthy, um, they're, they're, they're set on the goaltending side of things. And as I said, that like Jake DeBrusque, I, I, I know people had criticism of the contract and, and, and have had criticism of Jake DeBrusque. Um, not not everyone, obviously, but some people have said it. But DeBrusque, for me, like at 5.5 mil, I think that's a brilliant contract because, as I said, he's been playing on a Boston team that isn't outside of pub, um, uh Oh my god, um, Pasta. Um, for some reason, Zarka's name coming. I'm like, no, he's not a 60 goal scorer. Um, Pasta, um, you know, he scores 60 goals, but like the next best score on that team was like 20 goals. Um, they're not a huge five powering team outside of Pasta, so you know, it's not surprising that Jake DeBrusque only puts up 20 points on, on such a defensive um, side. But coming over to Vancouver, who we know can score goals. Um, and they share it around. Like you look at that lineup and how many goals each player scored throughout is just it's phenomenal. So I wouldn't be surprised if he gets the minutes that he should. 
mm. if he puts up 30 goals. Um, I, I wouldn't be surprised. And if he puts up 30 goals, then immediately you can see this team being a um, an absolute powerhouse of the West again. Yeah. Um, I don't think the uh, yeah. the offense is the question for DeBrus, though. I think it would be the defense. It's um yeah, you know it's it's like why Kuzmenko and whatnot, you know, fell out of love um with the coach. Is he gonna it, put up thirty? You, 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 you can put yeah exactly. So <laughs> I would um that that is my concern with DeBrus is just uh, does his defensive game fit the coach's model, and um I mean, can he adjust? So. Look, he's a very consistent player. I think he's, he, as we were looking earlier, um, he's only had really one blemish season. Every other season's pretty much been around 20 or more goals, um, give or take just a little bit. So uh, you know what you're getting from him. It's just mm-hmm. the defensive side, if he can make sure that's all tight um, and make sure that he can adapt to the system. I, Yeah, I look, I don't see why they can't go into the playoffs again because they haven't really lost too much. And on the flip side, they haven't gained so much um, to change the core. So mm. you got you got the core. You got another year under the belt. Hughes has another um, year under captaincy, so he's getting more accustomed to that field. Uh, it looks like everything should develop in the right way. A lot of their players are at the right ages as well. You know, they're yeah. at their um, their prime. There's not many old players on this. I think the oldest I'm seeing no, is 32 from Forbort, who yeah. was just bought in. Maybe five, uh, 34 from Myers. But outside of those two, it's uh, 30 or less, really. Um, they're they're in the window right now. They re- yeah. they really are. And I, I look, I can see them going going deep. Um, it's just more of the question on can they? Obviously, because last season was uh, was sort of what we've been expecting for so long from Vancouver, but it's the first time they've actually proven it um so you know sorry for being a bit skeptical um of the side i'm sure they will have a really good season but considering last season was that first time that they've really come out um i still holding that like okay but what if what if it was just a once-off and they fall back to old yeah, habits everything um, clicked at the right time yeah exactly as, as right. i'd probably um, do a new jersey you know you go from doing this thing everyone predicting you the yeah. win, win or come second and then you don't even make the playoffs <laughs> Well, um, that's well, probably that was, the biggest comparison, the comparison they have here. Yeah, yeah, that was the comparison that was made, right? Vancouver did what New Jersey did the year before. Um, will they do what New Jersey did last season? And just completely shit bed. I mean, they they could. Um, I doubt it. I think this is a more matured team than than what New Jersey um, was. But we'll, we'll just have to wait and see. But I guess um, who is your player to watch who, who are you looking mm. out for who, who are you expecting to do something special this season i guess my player to watch is debrusque himself mm. you know, a seven year um 5.5 mil um and it's not on his offensive side it's more his defensive side so mm-hmm. i'm looking at debrusque for his defensive side and how many minutes he's taking in the d zone yep Yep. Um, well, mine is DeBrusque was was on there, um, but uh, Brock Besser, he last season just forty goals was an absolute beast in terms of goal scoring, and it is his contract. Yeah. He is what? UFA at the end of the year, and we all know what. So it's guaranteed UFA fifty goals. Do. That's what we're saying. <laughs> I was going to say, if he put up forty goals last year, surely he's going to do a, a fifty or or a 60-goal um, Pastor and Matthews sort of level um, performance. But, no, I, I, I think, um, yeah, I'm definitely going to be watching whether um, Besser can um, back it up um, and, if not, go go bigger and really give uh, the Canucks something to think about in terms of, well, how do we sign a guy that's just gone 40 goals and then backed it up with a 50-goal season? Um, how much do you have to sort of sign him for? So... Yeah, guess yep. um, let us know in the comments below who's your player to watch um, for the for the Canucks. Who do you think is going to have a breakout season or maybe go the other way and have a little bit of a down season? Just let us know in the comments below. Yeah, but uh, yeah, we'll leave it there. So don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel for more hockey content as we'll be posting uh, some previews for all the hockey teams, all 32. And yeah, like Nick said there, don't forget to comment below. But until next time, we'll catch you guys. Bye.